Today, I pose the question, does free speech have limits? And I'm going to answer it straight away by saying, yes, yes, it does. And those limits are, in my opinion, plainly defined in the Constitution of the United States of America, basically up to and including screaming fire in a crowded theater and calling for violence. But in Bakersfield, California, just about a week ago, Riddy Patel, a 28-year-old, I guess, activist, didn't get the memo and doesn't quite understand why she is being charged with, I believe it is 18 felony charges. When Miss Patel appeared before the Bakersfield City Council on the 10th of April this month, she had a lot to say. And unfortunately, I believe, rightly, it was decided that her First Amendment rights had very much been surpassed. Now, let's take a look at what she has to say, analyze it, and learn some lessons from it. Hi there, my name is Riddhi Patel. I'm here to speak in support of the City Council introducing a ceasefire resolution, specifically the one um, United Liberation Front um, has drafted. I don't have faith that you'll do this. You guys are all horrible human beings and Jesus probably would have killed you himself. And the thing is though, it's very clear to me as in someone who's been an organizer for the past couple of years, that none of you care because you, you guys don't care about anything happening in Palestine or any other country where oppression occurs because you don't care about the oppression occurring here. First and foremost, what power does the Bakersfield City Council have for a ceasefire? in another country thousands of miles away. Now, it's all well and good calling for it and saying we would like to see it. I think we'd all like to see it. But unfortunately, I don't think that the Bakersfield City Council have the power to force two countries that are fighting one another thousands of miles away to stop fighting one another. So that's, that's my first point. That's why 40% of current workers don't earn a living wage. That's why the median wage is $30,000. That's why 2,300 people have been evicted in the last year alone because of your failures. That's why the carpenters here were speaking behind me when Bob Smith himself and his son... So these, for the most part, are things that the city council may be able to affect. Okay, so let's talk about these. You are in Bakersfield. So let's talk about Bakersfield issue. And let's... I mean, it's been kind of a rough start, but she's kind of still within the First Amendment here. I mean, she did say that Jesus would have ended these people. Stupid real estate company, Sage Equities, has been fined $1.3 million by the California Labor Commission for stealing wages from the Carpenters Union. It's why you won't give leadership council right to council, which Bakersfield residents deserve, and you won't even fund it properly. You'll give it scraps while you give the police literally a murderer millions of dollars while residents who've been evicted that are literally here telling you they've been evicted you can't give them money to even get the bare minimum of right to counsel and well also once again local issues completely agree inflammatory language still within her first amendment rights i would say when the city budget comes up this summer I know that you guys will vote to increase police funding. And I understand that you guys are all horrible people. But the thing is, 2,300 people being evicted. To be fair, most politicians are horrible people. In the last year, those are votes. And you guys, those are votes to win here in Bakersfield. And while you, you guys parade Gandhi around as a Hindu holiday called Chaitra Navratri it starts off this week, I remind you that these holidays that we practice, that other people in the global south practice, believe in violent revolution against their oppressors. And I hope one day somebody brings the guillotine and kills all of you motherfuckers. There you go. There it is. That is a threat. That is a call for violence. That is. She knows this is being broadcast live. There are people in the room, and she is essentially saying it is justified and somebody should go and do this. Thank you. And with that, that is the end of. Got another chance at the dispatch box to. <laughs> continue to mess her life up? Let's take a look. 
Welcome. Please introduce yourself. And would you lower the mic, please? My name is Ruthi. I'm here to speak on agenda item 7D1, um, but also addressing Councilman Smith's comments that he doesn't know what he's talking about with the California Labor Commission, a press release from the State of California Department of Industrial Relations. The Labor Commissioner's Office collected 1.3 million in wages and penalties resulting from a prevailing wage assessment against Bakersfield-based subcontractor Grant Construction employed by Sage Smith Equi or Sage Equities. Once again, local issues for local people something that the council might be able to affect. The wages collected will compensate 27 workers for unpaid prevailing wages while working on a farm worker housing construction project Patel, in the city of Wasco in Kern Ms. County. Patel, this portion is reserved for... If he gets for... to respond, I do too, Karen. Then following item Ms. 71... Go ahead with 71. The increased criminalization for no need other than you don't like when people come and hold you guys accountable for introducing ceasefire resolutions because the only escalation in violence has been by you all. And so there's no need to continue. In the last five years I've attended city council meetings, there's never been metal detectors. There's never been more cops. The only reason you're doing it is because people actually don't care if you guys don't like them and they're actually resisting. So you want to criminalize them. Uh, what she is talking about here is increased security measures uh, within the building, I guess in response to increased street protest. It comes to the, the things that are happening abroad that the city council can not affect. Like I said earlier, it would be great if we all could affect and stop the fighting between two countries thousands of miles away. Me, you, the Bakersfield City Council, we do not have the power to do that. The only people that can come to the table and come to an agreement are the two parties that are fighting one another. And then on top of it all, my councilman, Bruce Freeman, still will continue oppression here locally when he actually supports this and most likely will support voting for the resolution. And there's what... I'm sorry, but I don't think that increased security measures are oppression. Go through the metal detectors, go through the thing, and go on in. It's, it's common practice in public official buildings the world over. I need the community members behind me to understand is that these electeds don't really care about you. The only thing you're going to do... That's, one of, that's a very correct thing. These elected officials in any circumstance, do not care about you. They don't. Even if you vote them out of office, Munpreet sold her soul after leaving Jakara Movement as their development director, now working for a wonderful company as farm workers are unionizing with Wonderful and they still won't let them unionize. So she sold her goddamn soul. So regardless of whether you... Local issues for local people. Back on track, Rudy. Elect people into office, they'll backstab you, they'll let you die, and for that reason, you guys want to criminalize us with metal detectors, we'll see you at your house. We'll murder you. Right there. That is a direct threat to end life. That in itself is a criminal offense and should be a criminal offense. I don't believe that putting metal detectors in is criminalizing anybody. It is just increased security risks in the times that we are facing. It's as simple as that. But Bakersfield City Council have something to say about this threat. Next speaker, please. Lance, Ms. Patel, that was a threat. It was. What you said at the end. And so the officers are going to escort you out and take care of that. Be right. I, ab I absolutely agree with this. Others may not, but I do. This woman has just directly threatened these people and said, we will see you at your houses and we will end you. That is not free speech. That is a direct threat to these people. It's a direct threat to their lives. And do you know what? None of us really like politicians. I don't like politicians. They don't care about us, Miss Patel. You were absolutely right there. However, 
you cannot directly on live stream threaten to end somebody and incite others to end somebody. Because in her first go at the dispatch box, that could have also been construed as a threat. And she was arrested. She was placed into custody, and I believe she was held for 48 hours until... This week regarding the woman that threatened to kill several city council members. I'm Sam Hoyle, your neighborhood reporter. Riddy Patel appeared in court on Friday for a felony arraignment. She is facing 18 charges, 18. 10 of them threatening with intent to terrorize, eight of which threatening a public official. Now, Patel did plead not guilty. Her bail was set at $1 million. She is due back in court on April 24th at 9 a.m. for one hearing, and then her next hearing is set for April 25th at 8.30 a.m. This is not free speech. This is direct threats and direct incitement. Do I think that they go through with the incitement ones? Probably not, because I think they've got enough on her with the direct threats. But this woman has ruined her life. Bail set a million dollars. A million dollars. More hearings to come in the next week or so. I genuinely believe that these activists, especially activists, think that they can just say what they want threaten who they want, in many cases, attack who they want with absolutely no consequence. Now, I'm a firm believer in the concept. In fact, I live in a country where we don't have free speech. We have politicians that pay lip service to the concept of free speech whilst receiving hate speech law. Now, before people go, oh, my God, he must not believe in hate speech. Hatred is an emotion that means something different to absolutely everybody. And I just do not believe that there's a way we can legislate against that. We all hate different things, and we shouldn't be legislating against an emotion. Now, if we legislate against things that are tangible, like direct threats, direct calls to action, those are very different things. Those are statements of intent. Those are telling people, yes, we are coming to your house to do this. That is bang to rights as far as I am concerned. But I'm a firm believer that we should be able to express opinions as broadly as we want. And yes, uncouth opinions that even I despise as well. I despise racism. I despise sexism, homophobia, all of that. I despise those things. But do I think people should be criminalized for espousing them? Like, no, no. I just won't associate with those people. And I'm quite happy to call those people out. And I'm quite happy to air that those people are those things. But I don't think that they should be put behind bars for them. Because that's what free speech actually is. Defending speech with which you disagree. However, this has been a lesson, I hope. Especially to those who are privileged to use a contested term. To live under the First Amendment of the United States, where you are afforded a whole manner of speech protections that people in many other countries are not. This must be a lesson in how not to act. But in the same breath, she did it to herself, and therefore I cannot feel sorry for her. The points that she was making when it comes to what politicians are perfectly agreeable. Politicians are slimy, they don't care about you, they care about lining their own pockets and thinking about ways that they can control you, tax you further, so that they can continue to line their own pockets. That's what they care about, they don't care about you. But you can't, especially in a situation that is live streamed globally, go making direct threats and over incitement. Let this be a lesson. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this, then please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and of course you could consider becoming a channel member from just 99 pence a month and helping us grow this thing. Remember folks, don't directly threaten people. <laughs>